This is the start of a commission uh, my wife has. It's a little bit of a bittersweet commission because it's a memorial to uh, two beautiful children that were lost in a house fire. It, this will also go to the hospital that her other uh, big triptych went to. Um, and I'm kind of filming out a sequence here. I, I've already started. She's already started. And this video is going to be mostly about my part of the whole process. So. We had this ring in the yard forever and ever. I think it came from the house up front when we bought that at a sheriff's sale. I'm pretty sure it's an old wagon wheel, and I'm pretty sure it's uh, wrought iron. But regardless, we had it. Uh, the idea came to her to use it as part of a, a piece of art. So my job as facilitator was first to mount it on a piece of wood, which will later become bronze. And secondly, to mount the wood on plywood so it would be stable. And thirdly, mock up what the swing is going to look like uh, temporarily so she can do the clay work. She's the artist, she can do clay. I'm just the handyman. So I welded some all thread. I put a finished wood seat, which I hope we can cast at the end because it'll fit their little bottoms after she does all her clay work. And then this morning we tied a wire armature. It's real. Uh, awkward there's nothing much to tie to we wrapped it with some uh, rabbit wire or hardware cloth whatever you want to call it and she dipped cloth in plaster and kind of stiffened it up so now she has something that she can apply clay to and start so it's all her right now uh, my job will be to uh, reproduce this in bronze reproduce the ring in bronze uh, cast two ropes and reproduce them in bronze the seat in bronze, and when she's figured, finished with the figures, we'll make molds of those and cast those of bronze. So we're going to roll backwards a little bit. In the beginning of this video, um, I made molds of I made a mold of a piece of the hoop long enough that I can cast six waxes and, uh, and get the hoop. So I don't need the hoop anymore. She can have it to do her work. Um, made a mold of the block. I don't need it anymore so she can have it to do her work and the ropes are not ready so uh, we substituted all thread rod. So she's good to go. She'll be working on this probably a month and uh, when she gets done then uh, that'll be another step casting the figures in bronze. Alright we're picking out ropes here. So okay. what do you think? Structurally the bigger is the better for me. Mm -hmm. I kinda, this I kinda, is wider. I kind of like the hemp rope. The hemp? Yeah. It's going to be tough to get the rubber off now. It's, I'm not going to use rubber. You're not? No. What are you, you just casting? You're yeah. burning this out? Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? You're really? just going to invest this? Yeah, I'm going to invest that and burn it out. Well, that's... Simplest way. All right. Skip the mold making. You like I that? I like this. I oh, like that. Okay. Well, that's. I'm gonna start on that then. Yeah, I like the hemp. Well, what I do have to do is stretch it tight and coat it with plastic to make it a straight line. The yes. hemp ropes that we picked out were really kind of extra fuzzy, so I put the torch on them to burn off some of the whiskers, and it uh, it worked well. I hung the two ropes from the ceiling and I stretched them with a weight. Each one has a weight. One is a mall head and one is a five gallon bucket full of stuff. And I got some epoxy glue and I mixed it with some solvent so it's kind of thin. And I painted the rope and it, it did real good. It really wicked up into the, uh, into the hemp rope. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to be able to put this rope with this, this epoxy impregnated rope in the burnout kiln and burn it out. Um, I'm sure the plastic will burn. I know the rope will burn. It's just a matter of uh, how long I have to leave it in there. I can't really get the uh, ceramic shell too hot, so it's just a matter of uh, putting it in there and turning on the heat and giving it some time. It's mold making time. Uh, this is the base. We changed the angles on the end a little bit and we're happy with it. And this was a uh, used piece of wood so it has some defects so I went around with, with Bondo, Bondoed it up, sanded it smooth and it had an oil stain on one end because it came out of a boat so I 
put some shellac on top of that. Shellac is great about drying on top of weird stuff. So it is screwed down tight to this board and it is well waxed and I will spray it with relief and we'll start the rubber on that. And the hoop, which will be cast in bronze, is 40 inches in diameter, so that's 125 inches circumference. So I decided to break it up into six equal parts. They're a little more than 21 inches. I'm going to make a rubber mold of that and pour it six times. And um, didn't waste any time with this. I just hot glued these boards down. I shot this plywood down with the gun. I sealed the crack with some clay. And I put two little um, clay walls to kind of make a make it so the rubber, two halves of the rubber can lock together better and wax the heck out of it because the rubber loves to stick to raw wood and it would probably stick to this metal real good too. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rubber today, mother mold tomorrow, we'll flip it over the next day and do the opposite side. And the ropes now have the second coat of uh, thin epoxy on them. And I'm thinking this is going to do when it cures. It needs to be stiff enough so that I can dip it into the vat of ceramic shell without it bending and breaking the ceramic shell. But I don't want to overdo it because I don't want it to look all smooth and everything. I like that. We like a rough look. So this should be the last coat. So the second coat of epoxy is dry to the touch. I want to go put it out in the sun so it really uh, get up to a high temperature. Well, I think it's going to be a good thing. Look at that rope. That's a good rope. So end of day one, we have two coats of rubber on the mold for the base, and we have two coats of rubber for the sectional mold of the hoop. Uh, tomorrow we'll do plastic. This is how I'm going to attempt to pour the ropes. Um, simple as it can be, I got them stuck to a cup at the top, and I just got a brace at the bottom to kind of make them sort of strong. The weak link is it breaking loose from the wax cup um, on the first couple of dips. If I can get three dips without breaking it, then the ceramic shell starts giving it some strength. So that's what we're going to try to do. My vat of shell is not quite deep enough, so I had to use a paintbrush to kind of wet up the little top part where I couldn't get it down in there. see if we can get it coated with sand without it breaking. Okay, we've got the first dip. Nothing broke. So it's a couple of days later and it's time to demold the base. Um, the mold is complete. Before I start pulling it off, I will drill a bunch of holes through both halves of the mother mold and that way when I reassemble it, it'll assemble in the right position because the holes will line up. And then I put the sander on this top edge just to make it a little nicer to work with. And then you'll see that in spite of how much paste wax I put on everything and in spite of using the proper release agent, the stuff still sticks like crazy. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what, but it, it was a battle to get the mold off. But it came off and nothing broke.
the mold over to the foundry and I uh, poured wax in it. I slushed it a few times and I brushed it a few times. And I think I have a good thickness. It's kind of hard to tell till you get it out of there. But I can always add to it even after it's out of the mold. Um, the sides are kind of weak. So I'm going to put some wax struts in here just to keep it straight until it gets the first dip or two. And then it should be plenty strong on its own. Okay, I just pulled off the mold and it looks pretty good. I call this a glove mold when it's not split. So to get it off, you kind of got to turn it inside out. And you can put it back right side and put it in the mold for safekeeping. Very good. Now we need to sprue it up and start the dipping process. Okay, the base wax is ready to start the investment process. Put a pour cup and there'll be a hollow tube after the wax is burnt out and the bronze will run down there really fast and start filling up. And then some can go in here and here and here and here and here. And just a little burpee tube to let the air out. Um, it's fairly thick, so I'm thinking the bronze is going to flow fine. You never know though. First dip on the base and second dip on the ropes. Okay, I got the hoop mold ready to pour. The wax is going in this hole. Look at that. And on this end, I clamped a piece of bronze, just a chill plate, so that when the wax gets there, it'll freeze and won't try to run all over the floor and everything. Now that I have a mold pulled from the temporary wooden base and a mold pour, pulled from the ring, I'm going to put this together. This is the permanent seat and I'm going to put it together with all thread rods and weld them at the top so that way Debbie can have an armature to start working on the children's shapes for the children while I am pouring the ring and brazing it together. You would think that attaching two all-thread rods to the inside of the hoop, uh, 20 inches apart and 10 inches from the outside of the hoop, and having them uh, parallel and having them straight with the bottom and copacetic would be sort of easy, but this is my third try because I kind of tried to wing the first two tries and it's not even close. So this time I spent a little time, put a bunch of braces and brackets and clamps and it's right, so I'm going to tack it and take it down and weld it up good. Welding on this hoop was making some really strange noises and sparks. Uh, I'm guessing that's because it, maybe it's wrought iron. I don't really know if somebody knows. Uh, leave me a message. I'm kind of curious. I mean, it seemed to weld okay. It was just very different from any kind of steel that I've welded in the past. I needed six uh, wax casts of this little partial hoop, and I uh, ended up having to pour eight. I had two duds, but uh, that's okay. It's easy to pour wax. Ow. Has to be one.
beautiful. Okay, my six wax casts are done and treed and I'm getting ready to dip them. Um, I don't normally like to do this because what's going to happen is the bronze is going to come straight down here and start filling up from the bottom, but it's also going to fill from the top. That could create an air bubble or something in the middle, so it's probably not good technique. But this is such a big cross section. This is a heavy piece that I don't think it's going to be frozen when this bronze hits this bronze, so I'm, uh, I'm counting on it working. And one of the waxes didn't come out all the way so I took the piece of it I'm gonna cast it just to give me a little bit extra uh, in case I run short or if I want to experiment on chasing techniques and stuff so I've been dipping the uh, ropes and the base I'll start dipping the hoops I think this would be a good time to wind up this video it's getting kind of long and we'll start the next one with the bronze pour of uh, probably pour these two first and then these three.